Okay, today I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the ways that um, the add-ons um, and integrations and that sort of thing work in Home Assistant. So the, there's different ways that you can extend Home Assistant. Um, I'm just going to explain the different ways and, and then maybe talk a little bit of how they relate to the um, Predbat tools as well. But um, so starting, if you look in Home Assistant, we have devices and services, and we also have add-ons. So devices and services, um, you can add support for various different um, devices and what they call hubs in here. So these are things that are, they're like um, drivers, something that Home Assistant can control. <clears throat> so I've got various things in here. I've got Octopus Energy, which should give me my energy rates, for example. I've got my Ring cameras, I've got my Tesla integration, uh, I've got my Wallbox charger here. Um, I, I've got the, um, the mobile app on my phone, so you can send messages to your phone. Um, got UK carbon intensity information, um, got the uh, Give Energy cloud services here, um, to a local integration, does smart plugs and that sort of thing. Um, and all of these are actually, um, um, they're like custom integrations that are inside Home Assistant. Um, so some of them come built in with Home Assistant and you can just add them, for example, and some of them you don't they don't come with home assistant and you can install them using hacks and all hacks basically does when it adds what they call an integration here <clears throat> a few of mine have come from hacks like octopus energy etc is it copies the files locally into home assistant for you and keeps track of if there's a new version so if i click on this one i can see um this is Octopus Energy. It's not actually reporting. I've got any new versions here. Oh, no, actually it is. So I've got two in local and I've got a new version. So if I pull this one up and it will show me what the change log is and allow me to update. And that's essentially going to copy the files locally. So if I have a look in my file editor, for example, then <clears throat> I will find um, underneath um, Home Assistant, um, I'll find custom components and then I can find the source code for a bunch of these things. So here's Octopus Energy and here's an integration. Um, without going too much technical detail, you'll find a bunch of Python files for integration. And these things actually talk to Home Assistant. So you'll see that it imports the actual Home Assistant libraries themselves. And the code's a little bit awkward to understand because it's got lots of these sort of asynchronous Python things in them and it talks via an API, which isn't hugely well documented, to be honest, and most people just copy and paste them from other integrations and actually try and extend them. Um, so one of my integrations here is the uh, the G Cloud integration, which is this is the one that allows you to talk to give energy inverters through the cloud services. Um, so that's an integration. Um, and they generally provide, like I said, devices, but they also provide things called hubs. So a hub talks to more than one device. So in this case, the GE file integration I've done is actually called the hub because you can have more than one inverter, right? So it talks to more than one device. The second thing you get here is something called add-ons. And rather nicely, Home Assistant's got its own built-in add-on store, so you don't need hacks for those. And add-ons are a little bit different because each add-on is essentially its own Docker container. So I don't know how familiar you are with these sort of things, but essentially a container is something that holds all the dependencies for something to run. It's like running its own little operating system inside it. So they're completely self-contained and each one of them can run separately. Um, and so one of the, um, the things on here is, is that daemon, for example, which I've been using for Predbat in the past, and that's that runs in one container. Give TCP, which is the Give Energy um, local inverter controls, is actually an add-on, and that's interesting. It possibly should be an integration, and I'm not exactly sure why it went down that route, but it essentially talks using MQTT, which is the protocol that allows it to talk to Home Assistant. Um, through into what is essentially an integration called MQTT that then actually passes the data through. Whereas most of these add-ons don't do it that way. Instead of using MQTT, they talk to Home Assistant through um, a REST interface, which is essentially like a, 
like a web interface so they talk to it. So this is a new Predbat um, add-on. Um, sorry, I'm saying most of the add-ons talk through some sort of um, REST interface to home assistant. So this is a new Predbat add-on. And what you'll see here is when you install, it essentially builds the container and then it starts running that container. And what you'll see in the log file then is what's actually coming out of it. Um, and this log file is actually shortened on the Predbat state. The one that's only just printing the, the final status is not printing all the, the stuff in between. Um, and obviously you can stop these and you can restart them. One of these things is that these persist over a reboot. So when you restart Home Assistant, these things just continue where they left off before, which can cause a few interesting things if they don't start up properly. But generally speaking, that they work okay. Um, so um, if I was to go and have a look at the source code of an add-on, it's actually quite different from an integration. So if you go into an add-on, what you'll find is this thing called the Docker file, which is essentially how to build the container. And these are a bunch of commands that essentially say what things to install based on a base image. And in this case, the base image is actually specified from the build YAML and it's Ubuntu in this case. So we have Ubuntu build image and then inside the Docker file, it stores a bunch of extra things, which is basically just Python, nothing really special. And a few extra requirement libraries that are listed in the requirements text. And these are a few libraries that uh, Prebat uses. <clears throat> and then when the container starts, um, as there isn't a run command here because this is using um, a, uh, the S6 overlays, which essentially has an initialization command um, and essentially calls it a run sh command. And then the run sh starts and this one calls Python and it calls startup Python. And the startup Python is essentially something that downloads Predvat from um, GitHub if you don't have it already and then launches it. And then once you have it, it can update itself, so it doesn't need to do any more. Um, so that is an add-on, and that is quite different from, um, if I go back in GitHub, sorry, and we go to G Cloud, which is an integration. Integrations always have custom components. And in here, you'll find there's a bunch of code that talks to Home Assistant directly. So for example, these sensors are actually using Home Assistant libraries and they're providing sensor values um, through um, and into Home Assistant directly. So this is kind of looked into the internal code. So those are quite different things. Um, so um, Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. And then the third thing I'm going to talk about then is App Daemon is essentially an add-on for Home Assistant that allows you to build Python apps fairly simply without having to design your own add-on. And it's a really good library, but it has a bunch of limitations, some of which we were running into with Predbat, like when you try and get history from Home Assistant, if it takes too long, it kills it. And that's causing problems. So what I've done now is move Predbat into its own add-on without App Daemon and therefore it talks directly to Home Assistant. So if it's inside a Home Assistant add-on, it already knows what port and what key to use to talk to it, um, which is quite useful. So it's able to do that directly. But if you look at the Predbat add-on documentation, then um, inside the docs, it'll explain how to install it as Home Assistant and Obviously, it will create its own add-on directory, which is where the apps.yaml lives. You can also install it outside Home Assistant, which is a bit more advanced here, where you essentially run it on the, your own machines. You can run it on a Mac, or you can even run it on a Windows with the Debian subsystem. It needs to have the Linux libraries there. <clears throat> you can run it outside without even an add-on, or you could run it within a Docker. You can actually build your own Docker container without Home Assistant, and you can actually run it as well. And in all cases, they'll talk directly back to your home assistant. But in these two cases, outside or within the Docker, you're going to have to set the home assistant URL and key so it knows what machine to talk to. 
the nice thing is these could be a different, totally different machine. They could even be in a different network if you exposed externally or the performance might not be that great. Um, so hopefully that's useful to explain the differences. Uh, and then when I go into the file editor and I have a look in the add-on config area, you can see my Predbat add-on has got its own directory in here and it has got its own log file and it's also got its own apps.yaml. So if you're moving from one of the other methods, you just need to copy it over. You don't have to redo it. And it's also got the Predbat source code here, which you can update from inside Predbat just as before. So the add-on has got its own version and then Predbat's got separate version. Um, whereas the these I've disabled now, but the directories are still here. The app daemon Predbat is pretty similar, but it's actually running under app daemon. And so it's kind of got the um, apps directory with the apps.yaml in it. Um, and it's got the log files um, and all that sort of thing in there. Um, and then <clears throat> you can see PredAI, which is its own add-on. It's got its own directory. And PredAI doesn't create a log file at the moment but it's got its own database in here that stores all the information. So that's its directory. So when you do a backup of these things, it'll back up the directories. An app daemon, obviously, if you've got a standalone app daemon, I've got that for Predheat is, is also got its own directory. So they're different add-ons. Um, and then if you're running the Predbat add-on, then when you go to system logs, Predbat, you'll get the, the main system log. That's the short in log that just tells you of any errors and whether it's working correctly. And then if I go back to this add-ons area, look in the Predbat, I can find the full log file here. And this has actually got what you'd normally expect with the Predbat runs with all the information about what it's actually doing. So two different log files to, to look at. Either way, the results are the same. If you check your plan, you can see the last updated date, check it's running, um, etc. Well, hopefully that's useful. Thanks. Bye now.